Jill Biden is expected to speak at the Democrats' virtual convention tonight in support of her husband, presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. Former U.S. Presidents Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter will also speak in support of Biden and his running mate, California Senator Kamala Harris. Americans had never witnessed a virtual national political convention before Monday night, but the pandemic has forced the Democrats this week and the Republicans next week to abandon the traditional hoopla-filled conventions of years past for fear of spreading the coronavirus. Last night's festivities included taped endorsements of Biden by Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser and former First Lady Michelle Obama. U.S. President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence are attempting to upstage Biden's week in the spotlight by traveling to political battleground states that could play a pivotal role in the election. Mr. Trump was visiting the Midwestern state of Iowa on Tuesday and also the border state of Arizona. He gets his time in the spotlight at the Republican convention next week. The United States has welcomed the guilty verdict in the trial of four men accused of the assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri. Judges at a U.N.-backed tribunal found one of the four defendants guilty earlier Tuesday. The other three were acquitted. The Netherlands-based tribunal found Salim Jamil Ayash guilty on all counts, including the intentional homicide of Hariri and 21 bystanders and the attempted murder of 226 other people who were injured. He was also convicted of conspiracy to commit a terrorist act using explosives. None of the four defendants, all low-level Hezbollah operatives, have been seen in years. They were tried in absentia. Police on Mauritius have arrested the captain of the Japanese carrier that ran aground off the coast last month, spilling a thousand metric tons of oil and causing possible irreparable damage to coral reefs. Sunil Kumar Nandishwar, the Indian captain of the MV Wakashio, was charged Tuesday with endangering safe navigation. He faces a bail hearing next week. The ship's first officer was also arrested, and investigators say they are interviewing all crew members. The Wakashio became disabled July 25th and started leaking oil almost two weeks later. About 1,000 metric tons leaked into the Indian Ocean, and another 3,000 were pumped out before the ship broken too. Mauritius has declared an environmental emergency. Experts from Japan, the United Nations, and France are working to clean up the oil. Reuters is citing a U.N. official saying U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will likely visit the United Nations on Thursday to pursue the resumption of sanctions on Iran. The official said Pompeo would also likely meet with U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres. But several Iranian officials also spoke to Reuters, saying the fate of the 2015 international nuclear deal between Iran and a group of world powers will hinge on who wins the November presidential election in the United States. U.S. President Donald Trump withdrew the United States from the Iran nuclear agreement in 2018. Iran has since declared it will no longer abide by the terms of the deal. Mexico's government said Tuesday there were signs the country's coronavirus outbreak had peaked following more than a half million infections and 57,000 deaths. The country's deputy health minister said the pandemic is in a clear phase of decline. He said the number of daily cases and deaths is falling consistently in most areas. Mexico has the world's highest, third highest death toll from the virus. Experts say that the low level of testing in Mexico makes it hard to assess the condition accurately. The government says the number of deaths relative to population size is a more accurate measure than the overall total. When it comes to deaths per 100,000 inhabitants, Mexico is in, in 13th place worldwide, based on official data. Soldiers in Mali's capital mutinied on Tuesday. They've taken the president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, and the prime minister, Bubu Sisa, into custody. A reporter for VOA's French to Africa service says the president was arrested at his house in Bamako Tuesday and taken to a military camp in the town of Kati, 15 kilometers away. The prime minister was also taken to the same camp. No casualties have been reported in the unrest that followed.